We know that Apple supplies their own chips to the iPhone and of course, they can call it however they decide to. Apple began with an A4 chip and increased the number each year, calling it the A5, A6, occasionally throwing the X at the end of the name. But once, all of a sudden, they started to call their chips Bionic, which they do pretty much up until today. But what's Bionic? We've associated it with being faster and newer, but what does that actually mean? What's the term Bionic for? First of all, the latest and greatest iPhone 14 Pro uses Apple A16 Bionic chip, so it's clearly something that works well even today. Apple introduced it for the first time with the release of the iPhone 8, and at that time, the word Bionic didn't really mean anything to me, except for one reference, but yeah, as it turned out, it's really not the same thing. But what was the reason for this shift? In order to understand it, we need to take a quick look back at history because that's what we all love to do. So the very first original iPhone had a chip code APL0098, which definitely doesn't sound that good, but all iPhones until the release of the iPhone 4 were equipped with the single-core Samsung-made chips, including the first iPhone ever. Apple only started calling their chips and started making their own ones in 2010 with the release of the already mentioned iPhone 4. And it went on like this each year with a bigger number in the chip's name and more power being added. Until 2013, when Apple surprised everyone with the release of a 64-bit chip for the first time ever. It was the Apple A7 dual-core chip designed for the iPhone 5S. The A7 includes a new image processor, it also includes an area code, the Secure Enclave, that stores and protects the data from the fingerprint sensor. This jump to 64-bit with the A7 was pretty substantial because it enabled the iPhone to do much more, and the iPhone 5S was the first iPhone to ever use biometric authentication in the form of Touch ID. That's why the chip had to be so advanced. Fast forward three years is when Apple made another big jump. They released the Apple A10 Fusion chip. It was the first quad-core chip in an iPhone ever. It had a 40% faster CPU and a 50% better graphics performance than the preceding Apple A9. Embedded in the A10 is the M10 motion coprocessor. It also includes a new image processor, has better encoding and decoding support for multiple new formats and it also has like motion jpeg some really technical stuff which not a lot of people are interested in the important thing is however that besides the yearly performance increase the other reason why apple needed to improve their chips so much was the release of the iphone 7 and 7 plus which the a10 fusion shipped with as you know the iphone 7 plus was the first iPhone ever to feature a dual-lens camera setup. It was mostly used for brand new portrait photos, but the cameras got overall enhanced and needed a more powerful chip to run them. And those of you who paid attention could notice that there's a new word in the name, Fusion. So, as I mentioned, the A10 Fusion is quad-core chip. It has two performance cores and two efficiency cores but it can't use them at the same time. It has to switch whenever necessary, hence Fusion. This was great because it was a brand new way for the iPhone to utilize energy. The device received extra power under heavy workload, but could easily save battery when heavy performance wasn't needed. So the new design fused together all four cores. Then, right the next year, Apple made another big step forward, releasing A11 Bionic. And again, they had a good reason to do so. It was released as part of the iPhone 8 lineup, and while the 8 series wasn't really that interesting, alongside it we've also seen the iPhone X. The brand new design and the replacement of Touch ID with Face ID. So yeah, the Face ID needed even more power, and the A11 includes a dedicated neural network hardware, which is part of the Apple's neural engine, as they call it. And this is responsible for handling face detection 
and making sure that Face ID is safe and is secure. With the difference in performance, namely 25% faster high performance cores and a 70% better high efficiency cores, there's also one other big difference. It's called Bionic. And the word, the term Bionic, is just Apple's term for having performance and efficiency cores working together. And here is the crucial difference. The ability for all cores to work at the same time was pretty cool and that's why this change, this progress deserved its own name. That's why the chip is literally called Bionic. The iPhone went from single core to dual core to quad core fusion to quad core Bionic, which could finally use all the cores at the same time. And although the A11 Bionic isn't manufactured anymore, it got replaced with more advanced version of the very same chip. So all the iPhones that came after the iPhone X have a Bionic chip inside them. This is clearly a technology that was proven to be reliable. It's also important for people buying devices secondhand. If you, for example, plan on buying iPhone with a budget of $100 to $150, then it's much better to buy an iPhone 8 instead of an iPhone 7 because of the chip improvement. The Bionic chip will serve you much better. The Bionic chip is the reason why some older iPhones and iPads still feel fast and fluid when being used even a couple of years later. And speaking of iPads, at first, the Bionic chips were only present in iPhones. Apple is known for equipping iPads and other products like the Apple TV with the same chipsets. However, there is no iPad that runs on A11 Bionic. The next year, in 2018, when Apple released the A12 Bionic to be part of the iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR, then they also started to ship this chip even to iPads. So the iPad mini 5th generation, iPad Air 3, and iPad 8th generation also feature a 12 Bionic chip. Even though Apple as a company is known for naming pretty much every single thing, including features which would be okay even without a name, well, the fact that they named this chip Bionic is not just about the terminology or marketing. It's really a different way that the chip works and it just marked a huge difference for the chip improvements and iPhones in the future. And this is exactly the reason why some Apple chips are called Bionic and some older ones are not.